Good evening, everyone. And you are welcome to this week, Digging Deep. I want you to go ahead and appreciate the name of the Lord for giving you the grace to be part of the living today. Giving you the grace and understanding to come and learn at the feet of the master tonight. I want you to go ahead and appreciate the name of the Lord. Thank him because of the gift of life he has given to you that money cannot buy. Thank him for all his great faithfulness over your life, your family, everything he has put into your possession. Begin to appreciate the name of the Lord right now. The psalmist says, bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not his benefit. He has redeemed us from the cause of the law. He has given us a new son. Appreciate his holy name. Thank him for this kind of privilege for you to be among the living today and for you to learn today. Go ahead and appreciate him. Go ahead and appreciate him. I want you to commit yourself to the hands of the Lord also tonight. Say, Father, come and open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my understanding, Lord. I want you to speak to me tonight. I want you to speak to me tonight, Lord. Lord, I need your word at this time of the day. I need your word in this time of the season. Come and speak to me. Speak expertly to me in the language I can understand. Go ahead and commit yourself to the hands of the Lord. If you don't experience any encounter today, there is even better for you now to come. But speak and tell the Lord. Talk to your maker. Talk to your father. Lord, I've come to lie, to learn at your feet. You will speak to me, Lord. You will speak to me, Lord. You will meet me at the point of my need. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we welcome you, Lord. Father, Lord, we thank you because according to your word, you said, where two or three are gathered in my name, in their midst, I am there. We are more than two. We are more than three. And this is the confidence we have in you because forever, oh, Lord, thy word is settled in heaven and it is settled. Lord, I pray right now, the word that will be coming out from the throne of grace tonight, Lord, let this settle in our heart in the name of Jesus. May he not fall on the rocky soil, Lord Jesus. Let it fall on the fertile land and let it bring off fruit in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. He said he sent his word and he healed them. Lord, come and heal our unbelief tonight. Speak to us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, ancient of days. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. For the last time, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. And let the church of the Lord say a living word. Amen. Either you are on the Zoom platform or you are on the YouTube platform, your response matters a lot. Type it. Type it. It's part of you what affirming that so be it. Any word that will be coming from tonight, just say amen. Claim it. Say it. Type it. The Lord will help you as you do so. In the name of Jesus. Today is another time we've come to the presence of our Father to learn at the feet of our Master tonight. We believe God Himself will speak to us right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I welcome every one of us to tonight digging deep, both those watching me online on YouTube and every social media platform and those on Zoom. I pray the Lord Himself will speak His word to our life tonight in the name of Jesus. The topic we'll be considering tonight is the children's bread. The children's bread. I repeat it for the last time. The children's bread, that is what we'll be considering tonight. I believe we all know the meaning of children. Let me just simplify it. We are all the children of what? God. Why? Because God created us in his own image and its own likeness for us to have dominion over the works of his end. So we are the children of God. We are the children of God and we believe and we say it in boldness that we have a father that's seated in heaven. We have the father that is omnipresent, that is omnipresent, know it. He knows everything. He can do everything. Whatever he says, no man can change it. Then what is bread? I will start my introduction from there. Bread is a staple of food or diet that is prepared from a dowd of flour and water, usually by baking to satisfy one's hunger. I pray as you are sitting tonight or hearing me wherever you are, if there's anywhere you have been experiencing hunger in your life, 
you will be satisfied tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm saying it with assurance. I'm saying it with the belief I have in me that you will be satisfied tonight in the name of Jesus. And you will remember today for good in the mighty name of Jesus. John chapter 6 verse 35. Jesus declared, he said, I am the bread of life. Whoever come to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will neither be tested. I repeat it one more time. If there is any area of your life, you know, when you are hungry, that means you need to be filled. You need to be satisfied. So anything that is representing emptiness in your life, heaven will visit you tonight and you will experience divine restoration and your hunger and your thirst will be met in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus is the bread of life. The topic says the children's bread. That means what you deserve. What is your inheritance in the Lord? What is your home? What belongs to you? What has been customized to you? The children's bread. You will eat tonight and you will be satisfied in the name of Jesus. Let me continue the teaching. I will be establishing tonight's teaching in the book of Mark chapter 7, verse 26 to 28. This is a story of Jesus. As you know, he's always a miracle worker, like this song we just finished hearing right now. Waymaker, miracle worker. He opened the eyes of the blind. He made the lame walk. He made the dumb to walk to hear. He made the blind to see. He keep going from city to city because that is his primary assignment. That is the reason why he was sent to this world. He was going, and behold, in this verse 26, the woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she kept asking him to cast out the demon out of her daughter. This, the daughter of this woman was possessed with demon, and the woman had Jesus passing by, and the woman has a conversation. She had a conversation with Jesus that Jesus, my, my daughter has been possessed with demon. I know you can cast out the demon heart of this daughter. Imagine a daughter that is possessed with demon can never give joy to the mother, neither the father, nor the entire family nightly because that is a spot or that is an emblem in the life of that daughter. That seems as a reproach. And that is the reason why I've come tonight to give you a message of hope that wherever you have been experiencing dryness, Wherever you have been experiencing hunger in your life, your need will be met tonight at the cost of tonight's teaching in the mighty name of Jesus. But Jesus said unto her, let the children be filled first. We are the children. We need to be filled first. So if you consider some things in your life that you have not been filled or you've not been satisfied, then something is wrong elsewhere. That is the reason why as it's what cometh forth, he said his word is what? It's sharper than two-edged sword. It will break every barrier that is hindering you towards what? You to be filled in life, to fulfill God's mandate for your life. Who knows the kind of destiny this, this daughter is having, what she was having. But because she was possessed with demons, the devil has used her life just to do anything he likes. But here... Come, Jesus, the Savior. What happens in verse 27, I continue. For it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Yeah, we are the children. What belongs to all? The Gentiles, the unbelievers, must not have benefit of it. And we, that we claim to be the children of the Most High, that serve the gods that have everything insufficient, and we are lacking of these things. You will regain them tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. And Jesus, and he answered and said to him, Yes, Lord, yet even little dogs under the table eat from the children's crumbs. I still speak one more time. If you have been eating crumbs since the day of your life, since when you've given your life to Christ, you still notice everything around you looks like crumbs. Today, you will eat the real meat in the name of Jesus. 
You will eat the red diet in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus is the bread of life. If you have that Jesus in you, you have everything. That means what? You will never lack anything. And he said, if you are thirsty, he said, come unto me. I will give you water and you will never thirst again. That will be your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. In that verse, then said unto him, Lord, even more give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me will never thirst again. In the name of Jesus. Now I speak a word to your life. You will never thirst again. Say it, amen. Type it on the chat if you are online. Type it, claim it, claim it. I'm not the one that is talking. This is the word the Lord has instructed me, instructed me to pass across to the church of God. You will never be hungry again in life and you will never be tested again in the mighty name of Jesus. Think and reflect on this. We said the children bread. And what are those things that are still lacking in your life? What are those things that you've been aspiring all this way? You have fasted, you have prayed, but it seems those things have not even come to manifestation. Tonight is your night in the mighty name of Jesus. Think and reflect on this. There are some issues that represent hunger in your life. You are a child and you are not a slave. You need to claim your inheritance. The woman said, Jesus said, wait, let me attend to the children first. Don't forget tonight's topic is what? The children's bread. You can interpret it as your own inheritance, your own possession that you need to claim from your father as the bona fide sons and daughter of the kingdom. He said, you are a child and not a slave. Your right, you, your right shouldn't be deprived from you, from your father. Before we continue tonight's teaching, I want us to bow our heart just for a few seconds. I want you to commit yourself to the hands of the Lord one more time. Lord, ask for the forgiveness of sin because that will only be what will cause a barrier for your heaven to be open tonight. You've been lacking for some things. The Bible says, and when God created everything, uh, he looked at it. He tried to assess it. And he said, behold, all things are good and perfect. So what are those things that are not perfect in your life? It will be corrected tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. By the reason of tonight's teaching, it will be corrected in the mighty name of Jesus. No wonder the book of John chapter 10 verse 10, he said, the thief cometh not. The Lord created you and he looks at you. He looks and behold, he said, you are perfect. Then where is that imperfection in your life? Where is that imperfection in your marriage? Where is that imperfection in your spiritual life? Why do you keep rising and falling? Where is that imperfection in your financial life? Where is that imperfection in your marital life? It will be corrected tonight in the name of Jesus. And I've come to give you an assurance that everything the enemy have stolen in your life. You will recover them tonight in the name of Jesus because it is your portion. It is your inheritance. So shall it be for you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want a resounding amen by typing your answer. What do we mean by the children's bread? That is the things that you need to showcase even for the unbeliever truly to say you are the sons of God. These are the characteristics. These are the attributes of what should be evidence in your life. What should be visible in your life. And that is why I said, if you are lack of any of them, you will gain them back tonight in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In which we praise and we believe. What are the signs or what are the examples of the children's bread? We will continue now as I will continue the teaching. The example of the children's bread. If I started the teaching fully now, if you know you are lacking those points, try to keep claiming it. Claim all those points in your life, and I assure you that God Himself will visit you wherever you are. Either you are in UAE, either you are in Nigeria, either you are any part of the world you are hearing me at this moment. The world will come to your life because it is not my word, it is the word of God, and it will meet you at the point of your need. The children's bread. What is the first children's bread that you need? What is that inheritance that you need to have in your life that is lacking? 
It might not even be you. It might be your husband that is lacking this. You might stand in gap for any members of your family. It might be one of your children. It might be your closest ones. It might be your, your best friend. It might be someone that is closer to you. You notice that they lack this thing. Join your faith. Connect your faith with the grace that is available in the hour. Connect it with them and stand in gap for them. And I pray, testimony will follow in the name of Jesus. Healing is the first children's bread. Like the example we read together just now in the book of Mark chapter 7. Something is lack. The, the daughter is being, the woman daughter is what? She is possessed. She is possessed. Healing is one of the children's bread. No wonder Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5. He said, he has born, 53, from verse 3 to 5. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrow. Yet we have esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgression. He is bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his strife, we are healed. I want you to claim it right now. Say, I am healed to yourself. You can type it on the chat box, either on Zoom, either on Facebook, either on YouTube. Say it, I am healed. You are healed. You are no longer slave to sin. You are no longer slave to disease. You are no longer slave to virus. You are healed. Say it to yourself. He said, by his stripe, I am healed. By his stripe, you are healed. Jesus said on the cross, he said it is finished. Everything that he said has been finished, then why is it being visible in your life? It will be corrected tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. It will be corrected tonight in the name of Jesus. Psalm 107 says he sent his word, and that is the word you are hearing right now. Verse 20, and he healed them from every of their diseases. Because healing is part of the children's blood. From now forth, you will live a healthy life in the name of Jesus. If you don't know before, you have known now, healing is your inheritance in Christ. Healing is your portion in Christ. Healing is your birthright in Christ. You will begin to enjoy divine healing after tonight's session in the name of Jesus. Not even tonight, as you are hearing it at this moment. You know immediately Jesus spoke his word to that the, the woman daughter. And Jesus cast out the demon out of the daughter. Now, it will not be after tonight's teaching. As you are hearing the word right now, healing is taking place in your life in the name of Jesus. Only if you believe, because it's your inheritance in Christ. That is the first thing, the children's bread. You need healing. You need healing. You need il divine healing. That is why we have a grace physician. He's there. He's walking around. Only if you connect your faith with him, then he will heal you. Irrespective of every infirmity you have, any doctor report in your life, everything that you've even lost hope on, that has to do with healing, that has to do with your health, health wise, the Lord is restoring your head back to normal right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Let's move to the second one. The first one is what? The first one is healing. You need healing. You need healing for you to even fulfill God's mandate for your life. You need divine healing so that you can do the work as it pleases the master. You can't afford to be sick. No, you can't afford to be sick. Jesus, there is no record of Jesus that he was at a time sick. That's why you don't have to be sick. In the name of Jesus, healing is taking place in your life right now. Only if you believe, because it's just inheritance in Christ. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Let's move on to the second one. Breakthrough. The children's bread. Breakthrough should be part of your portion in life. A song said, the Lord is my portion in the land of the living. It's even good. Some that are even out of their own country. You find yourself in the string land. Everywhere you find yourself, you, should, you must experience breakthrough. Take a sample, an example, or a case study, case study of, of Jacob here. In the book of Genesis chapter 26, the case study of Isaac, sorry. He said, and Isaac saw in that land, and he received the same year an hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Sowing has nothing to do with money only. You, even you sitting right now, you can, you, you, can, you can decide to be doing any other things else. 
but because you you see it as if it's a mandate for me for me to be at the prince of god to learn at his feet you are also sowing your time you can decide to use it for anything else you have sold your time today the lord will repay you back in multiple breakthrough in the name of jesus you will break through in the field you will break through in life you will break through in your family everything you lay your hands on you will experience breakthrough in the name of jesus this is an, one of the children's bread that some christian lacks it's not all about how prayerful you are prayer is good you might be prayerful and even you might lack breakthrough in life this is a case study of isaac he sows in the land and the lord says and he reap multiple fold that will also be your testimony in the name of jesus you will not go back to your own country with shame in the name of jesus you will not go empty handed in the name of jesus by the time you visit your own country or those of you that have seen you for long they will see you and truly they will see the glory of the lord radiating in your life the song says abraham blessings am i we are the grandsons true faith of abraham so you need to possess this blessing of breakthrough if there's any aspect of your life you are struggling financially because you are under tonight teaching the lord will visit your financial life and you'll begin to experience divine breakthrough in the name of jesus you will not struggle to get things done in life in the mighty name of jesus so shall it be in jesus name let me move to the third point the children's bread what are the children's bread what you need bread to eat something you need to eat to satisfy your wants something you need to have in you that's supposed to be part of these characteristics of your life let people see you and let people see the glory of god radiating in you that is what god wants for you that is the level god wants you to be operating but for eventually that is something we prayed about for the prayer of forgive, forgiveness of sin if there is for eventually there is anything that is causing the barrier for you not to experience all this the way is clear now begin to claim it the way is clear begin to claim it with faith and it will come to manifestation everybody will see it and give glory and thank your god on your behalf in the name of jesus the children's bread the third one is righteousness righteousness why are you still struggling with sin you call yourself the child of god you are still struggling with inequity the face of the lord could not behold iniquity who shall ascend to the hills of the Lord? Psalm 24. And who shall stand in his holy place? He that have what? A clean hands, a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul to vanity, nor son deceitfully. Righteousness is the code and conduct of the kingdom. His son said, righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? You might be going to church. You might be bearing every source of name in the Bible. If you are not living a righteous life, you are disconnected from even all this possession, all the inheritance we are talking about. It is the code and conduct of the what? Of the kingdom. If truly you want to maintain a race with your father and you want to claim all your right with him, don't forget the prodigal son. The moment he noticed that he is living a way that is not even pleasing the father, that he just went like a vagabond, like someone that has no source, no root. The Bible says he came, there was a time, he came to his senses and he came back. You can still retrace yourself tonight because this is part of the inheritance you need to decide. This is the part of inheritance you need to have in you. This, is, this should be part of your life. If this righteousness is not accompanying you, it's not been accompanying you in the journey of this Christianity. You are just doing it. You are just doing it like a copycat. You go to church truly. But God does not recognize you. God doesn't know you. Truly, you, you go to church. You might even, you might have even given your life to Christ before I was born. But if you don't have this righteousness, the garment of righteousness in you, without all this, no one can see God. Then you take a look. You can't see your father. Let's use it as let, let, let's come. Let's let, let just let, let me give you a, just a simple example. You are knocking your dad's door and the dad refused to open the door to you. 
you are you you are being ref, you are being restrained, giving access for you to to see to to talk with your father. How will you feel? The same way Christians that come to church and they are not living a right life with God. They pray, they fast, but because this righteousness is not their code of conduct, they have not put on the garment of righteousness. And that is the reason why some people pray, 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 but it seems something is happening in their life. Try to retrace yourself this night because it is part of what God what demanded for you. What is being requested and what is requested for you. This is part of what you should have. Follow peace with all men and holiness because without this, no man can see God. Seeing we are compassed abide with so great of witness, lay not aside every weight and the sin we doth easily beset on us. The sin that is depriving you to live a righteous life with God. Tell that sin goodbye tonight. Goodbye world. I stay no longer with you. Who is on the Lord's side? Am I on the Lord's side? Are you on the Lord's side? Let those that are called by the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. The children's bread. You need this. Even you need this most. I'm telling you, if your way is right with God, you before you open your mouth, you have answered. He has answered you. Righteousness. Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? You need it. You need it. I pray the Lord will help you in the name of Jesus. But eventually we still have those struggling with sin. The Lord will have an encounter with you tonight. And you will no longer be a slave to sin. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. The first one is what? Healing. The second one is breakthrough. Keep claiming it. And the third one is righteousness. The code and conduct of the kingdom. Righteousness. Follow righteousness with all men. Follow righteousness with all men. Righteousness is the third one. Now let's move on to the fourth one. Fruitfulness. You need to be fruitful. I, I took a case study. You imagine. Genesis 1 verse 1. The Bible says, And in the beginning, God created the world. He created the earth. And the earth was void and without form. And the Bible, the Bible said, and God spoke, and God spoke, and God spoke, and it comes to manifestation, right? Now, when God created man, God only created one man and one woman. How many living things, both even though people keep dying every day, you can see the rate at which people keep multiplying every day. That is one of the basic examples of what? Fruitfulness, for you to keep multiplying in everything you lay your hands on. For you to multiply fruitfulness. Firstly, he said, and none will be miscarried or barren in the land. This is the word of the Lord. Exodus 23, verse 6, 26, and verse 28. He said, and I will send my terror among you and throw into confusion every nation you conquer. I will make all your enemies turn to their backs and run. I will send on it among you to drive the Evite, Canaanite, and Etite out of your way. He said, none shall be barren. Do I have someone that is listening to me right now? You know you are barren spiritually. You know you are barren physically. It's not until when you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. There are some things that connote barrenness in your life. I declare fruitfulness to your life right now in the name of Jesus. I said it one more time. Claim it and type amen on the chat box. Everywhere you are hearing me right now, either on Facebook, either on YouTube, Hey, on any social platform, claim it. Fruitfulness will begin to be manifested in your life right now in the mighty name of Jesus. You will no longer struggle. What your mates are doing with ease, you will not struggle to do it in life in the name of Jesus. Even if you experience fruitfulness in your life, you will serve God with peace of mind. You will serve God with ease. That will be your portion. That will be your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. Fruitfulness. He said, and none will be miscarried. What are those testimonies you've miscarried in life? I was talking with a friend of mine four days ago, and I asked about one of the sisters. We both we are both fellowship during our institution day. I said, What about this sister? 
And the brother told me a lot of things about the sister, and I felt bad. I felt bad. Is there anybody hearing me right now? You've come out to share a testimony. Then after a while, the testimony is aborted. You know, for example, when you share a testimony, God grants you a very good job. And after two, three months, you lost the job. When someone, the person see you again, those you share the testimony with, and they ask you, how is job doing? How will you feel? That is an abortion of testimony. Or someone has promised you heaven and earth. By so so time, come. I will give you that job. And lo and behold, when that time comes, the person disappointed you. That is an abortion of testimony. Somewhere I said, oh, by uh, efforts in prayer, in two months' time, we'll be getting married. Then after the uh, honor before the two months, nothing is showing forth. What happened? The, the relationship is dissolved. All those things are abortions of what? Testimony. But I'm very sure you find yourself in this kind of situation. The Lord will visit you tonight in the name of Jesus. And there will not be any experience of abortion of testimony in your life again. Whatever you lay your hands on, it will be prosper. You will not lose them in the mighty name of Jesus. And everything that seems like joy to you will not cost money for you in the mighty name of Jesus. If the Lord has given you a job that you are praising him for, you will not regret over it in the name of Jesus. Fruitfulness. You need to be fruitful in your marriage. You need to be fruitful at work. You need to be fruitful in faith. Even spiritually, you need to be fruitful. When you give your life to Christ, you keep increasing every day. That is fruitfulness. Then you test for the gift of the Spirit. After the gift, you test for the fruit of the Spirit. You test for it. You admire it. You claim it. You pray for it. And then you are growing up in faith gradually. Gradually, you'll be growing up in faith. Fruitfulness don't, doesn't only connote those that are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Where are those areas that represent dryness? That represent dryness? Emptiness. Or like a desert land. Your desert land tonight will be fruitful in the mighty name of Jesus. I said your desert land tonight will be fruitful in the name of Jesus. Because even though you don't know, you know right now. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You have known right now that part of your inheritance and part of the bread, which is your possession from your father, is fruitfulness. You will begin to be fruitful in life from now henceforth in the name of Jesus. I said you will begin to be fruitful tonight from now henceforth in the name of Jesus. I'm rounding up. I'm rounding up. The next one. Talk about fruitfulness, healing. We've talked about. Then let's go to the number five, longevity. Some Christians are scared, especially when they gave them a prophecy that we. I had a dream about you. I had a dream about you. I can see that. I can see coffin. Uh, I can see a coffin in front of you. Then you see Christians. They will be scared. Is that the promise of God for your life? Even though if maybe it's truly a prophecy, you can, you can wave it out with prayer. Because you are the sons of authority. You have authority in your mouth. You can cry to your father. Longevity. Psalm 61 verse 16 says, With long life I will satisfy him. And I will show him my what? Salvation. But eventually, the history of your family, nobody lived above 40 or 50 or 60 from your turn. Starting from your turn, you will break record in the mighty name of Jesus. You will see your children. You will see your children's children in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm not the one saying this. This is the word of God. This is the promise of God. He said, with long life, I will satisfy. Please underline that word, satisfy. That means you are hungry of long life. And God says, he is going to satisfy your need. He is going to fill your life. Is going to satisfy you with long life. Don't be scared. Don't be bothered about any negative prophecy. If you notice that is the traces in your lineage, either your father's side or your mother's side. It might not even be your father's side or your mother's side, but you dip your hands into some things in the past. And the nemesis is that this will be your portion. But because you are in part, you are part of tonight's teachings. 
I speak a word to your life. Longevity will be your portion in the name of Jesus. You will not die young in the name of Jesus. Every negative prophecy concerning you relating to premature death, for you not to fulfill God's promises, God's vision, God's mandate for your life, it is nullified tonight in the name of Jesus. Go into the realm of negativity in the mighty name of Jesus. The psalmist says, and you will see your children, children. Claim some examples in the Bible. The Bible says, and Abraham is old. Abraham is, and he is stricken in age. Claim all those promises. Claim those promises for your life. I studied the Bible. Isaac never dies young. Jacob never died young. Abraham never died young. Who is that, who is that person that is, that is giving you a wrong vision? That is giving you a wrong prophecy? You will never claim the word of God because, because it is written. That is one of the statements. When the devil hear it, the devil flee away from you. For it is written. This is not a word of man. This is the word of God, according to your word. Because your word is settled in heaven and on earth, it is settled. And in your life, it will be settled in the name of Jesus. Longativity. Longativity. Try to claim it. Claim all these promises for yourself. In case you are lack of any of these, keep claiming it right now. Attach your faith with my faith. Attach your faith with my faith. Claim it. I will never die young. I will not work for anybody at the peak of my achievement. The person will just lose, lose his or her life and another person will take over it. No, I will never work for anybody to eat in my... This one life I come, I will break forth. I will break through. You will break forth. You will break through. You will live long. See your children's children. If Jesus starts to come, that is the promise of God for you. And so shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, please, if you have any question, type your question on the chat box. Chat your question on the chat box. The admin will relate it. Type it on the chat box. Irrespective of any social media, you are hearing me right now. If there's any question as I'm rounding up, type your question on the chat box. It will be attended to. Longativity. Claim it as I'm rounding up. The children's bread. The children's bread. And the last one, the last one, the last one, then we will go to pray. The last one is deliverance. Deliverance. Obadiah chapter 1 verse 17 said, But on Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the children, all the house of Jacob, shall possess their possession. Don't forget when we started this topic. The children's bread. You eat it to what? To satisfy your task. You eat it to, to satisfy yourself. You drink water. Jesus is the living water. He said, he that drink of this water, living water, will not thirst again. He that eats this bread, because he is the bread of life, will never go hungry in life. Deliverance. What are those things you have been afflicted with? Don't forget, you gave your life to Christ. We know that. The Bible says, you've given your life to Christ. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behave. Behold, everything becomes new. We know that. But don't you know that? There are some things of your past. Prevention is not being corrected. That even affecting your life negatively right now. You need to be delivered. And what is the real deliverance? The word of God. Claim the word of God. Deliver yourself according to the word of God. He said, but on Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. If there is anybody under the sound of my teaching right now, you are being held captive. You are under the cage of the enemy. You are delivered tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. The power that delivers Saul and Silas in the prison will set you free right now in the name of Jesus. Because it is written, it is written if the Son sets you free, you shall be free indeed. You are no longer slave to sin. You are no longer slave to your past. He has redeemed your past. He has given you a new beginning. That will be your testimony in the name of Jesus. You need to be delivered. After you get delivered, then you can possess your possession. Because someone that is still under bondage, you cannot possess your possession. Firstly, you need freedom. And that is what you need right now. You will be delivered. And you are delivered by the reason of the word of God that is spoken right now. 
you will be delivered from every chain of life in the mighty name of Jesus. Sing this song with me. I'm trying to resist this song, but the Holy Spirit keep, keep, keep reminding me of the song. And I, I, before I even sing it, I keep hearing it. I keep hearing the song right now. Join me in faith and sing this song with me. I am delivered. Praise the Lord. I am delivered by his word. Once I was bound in the shame of Satan. I am delivered. Pray. Begin to lose yourself from every shame. Begin to, if your family, if they are sitting right beside you, begin to, everybody lose yourself. Say, I am loose from every shame of the enemy. I am loose from every shame of my past. I am delivered according to the word of the Lord. He said, but on, upon my Zion, there shall be deliverance. I possess my possession tonight in the name of Jesus. Because I am the son of God. I am the son of the most high God. I possess my possession in the name of Jesus. I'm rounding up. Joel chapter 2 verse 25. After possessing your possession. The Bible says, and I will restore to you <laughs> the yes. Don't forget you have been in bondage before. You have been in cage of the enemy. You have been in the custody of the enemy. But you have been delivered right now. What are the symptoms that shows truly you have possessed your possession? The Lord will continue to restore the years. That the years you think you have wasted. The opportunity you think you have wasted. The testimony you think has been wasted. It might even be true sin. But because you have acknowledged yourself. There is a turnaround in your life. And you have experienced deliverance as the word is coming out. He speak out his word and he delivered them and he healed them and he preserved them and he made them holy and he sanctified them and it purified them. He will restore the years that the locals has eaten, the canker ones and the caterpillar and the palmer ones, my great army, which I sent to you. Which I sent to you. Which I sent to you. This is the word of the Lord. He said he will heal you. You need healing. You need deliverance. The children's breath. These are the things truly you need. Don't allow the devil. Don't allow the enemy to deprive you of this. Claim the promises of God. Never give up in life. Never conclude that is the trade in our, in our family. Never conclude. Your case is different. You are exceptional. You are exception of the cause that is ranting in your family lineage. You can stand out and make a change. You can break up the barrier. You can deliver yourself. You, don't let, you, you are no longer a slave to sin. You are no longer a slave to struggle. You are no longer slave of your past. Deliverance. On Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and holiness and the house of Jacob. How many of you are the house of Jacob in the house? If you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, if you're on any social media or on Zoom platform, how many begin to wave your hands to the Lord right now? That Lord, I'm delivered tonight. Lord, I am healed tonight. Lord, you will satisfy my hunger tonight. Lord, you will quench my task lot tonight in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for sending your word to me in the name of Jesus. Say, I am healed. Keep claiming it right now. Say, I am delivered. Say, I am favored. Say, I am no longer a slave to sin. Keep claiming it right now. We have started, I've started rounding up the section right now. Keep claiming all these promises. And I want us to go to the realm of prayer right now. Keep claiming it right now. Keep claiming it right now. Keep claiming all those promises. Longativity is your portion in life. Longativity is your inheritance in life. Because the Bible says with long life and prosperity, he said, I will satisfy them. A song says, Abraham, blessings are mine. What are the blessings of Abraham that is not manifested in your life? That is not visible in your life? Keep claiming it right now. You need it. You need it. You have only one life to live. You have only one life to live. And after then, it's what? Judgment. A book will be opened unto you. Then some Christians will cry on the judgment day because when they see the glory and destiny God has 
given to them, but they could not achieve even one quarter of it due to sin. That is why you need to deliver yourself now. Because after today, there will be a divine turnaround. After this world, after the gathering of tonight, there will be a testimony. After the gathering of tonight, there will be abundance of rain. There will be a sound of abundance of rain. And the children of the Lord, there shall be deliverance. And the children of the Lord will possess their possession. You will possess your possession in the name of Jesus because you are delivered. You are no longer under slave. You are no longer under the cause of law, but you are under grace, which is the grace God has given to us in the name of Jesus, which is the grace the Lord has given to us. I want us to be in the mood of prayer right now that Lord, According to your word, you said you will restore to me the years the conqueror have eaten. You know yourself more than how I could do. And I believe the Holy Spirit is ministering to you right now. Now begin to claim it. All those years of wasted effort, begin to restore it back to me right now. Maybe in paraventure, you are, you, you are dealed for marriage, but you are scared because nothing to show forth. You cannot even boast to feed yourself. Talk less of getting married to someone that you will feed also. Begin to claim it right now. Your mates have gotten married since. Claim me right now. Lord, restore those years I've wasted. Restore them back to me. Do you know part of restoration? Abraham gave back to Isaac at old age, but the Lord still restored his promises to him. Begin to close, begin to claim your promises right now. Begin to claim your promises with faith right now. Begin to claim it right now. I claim the years. The Kankawams, the Palwamos, and the, the, the locusts, the years they have lost in the past. I claim it right now in the name of Jesus. 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 Father Lord, we thank you for tonight's teaching. Father Lord, we bless you. Father Lord, we exhort you. Father Lord, we magnify your holy name. I want you to wave your hands to the Lord and thank him for the word you have received tonight. Thank him because truly his presence can never be denied in our heart. Begin to appreciate the name of the Lord. Because forever, O oh Lord, he said his word is settled and it is settled. The same word was sent to us and the same word is in the beginning. In the beginning there is the word. The word was his God and God was his word. And the word was with us right now. Giving us an inspiration to hear about his word. Begin to thank the Lord. Even thank the Lord that Lord Jesus, I thank you for giving me the grace to be part of tonight's teaching. Thank you, Lord, because everything I've claimed tonight will not elude me in the name of Jesus. Begin to claim it in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, Lord, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. Most especially, we thank you for the word, your word you have sent to us. Father, Lord, let the word be settled in our life. Let it be settled in our destiny. In the name of Jesus. Every promises and every inheritance we have in you. Let it begin to manifest in our life. In the name of Jesus. Cause everything to work for our favor. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus mighty name we are free. Amen. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. And the church of the Lord say a big amen. Thank you very much for joining tonight's section. We will be looking forward to see you by next week, same time, every Monday, 7 to 8 o'clock. Come and learn at the feet of the master. And we hope and we believe the Lord will see us through in the name of Jesus. As I'm rounding up, I would just like to give us this short announcement. There will be a regional convention this month on thursday and friday 29th and 30th of this same october please try to attend try to deem it free to attend the program and i pray the lord himself will minister to you i repeat one more time the middle east regional convention on thursday 29th and friday 30th of this month note it down in your calendar book the date God is promising to do something spectacular in your life. You can't afford to miss the program. And I know the Lord will see you through in the name of Jesus. Thank you once more for joining tonight, digging this section. 
Thank you so much. You are blessed. See you at the top and stay at the top in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Redeemed Christian Church of God Middle East Region presents the Middle East Regional Convention 2020 with the theme Looking Unto Jesus. Date is the 29th and 30th of October 2020. Ministering Pastor E. A. Odeyemi, the Assistant General Overseer, Education and Training. We also shall be receiving a special Father's blessing from our Father in the Lord, Pastor E. A. Adeboye. When they say, Let someone shout hallelujah, yours will be the loudest. Your host, Pastor Boniface Okenwa, Special Assistant to the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Middle East Region. This event will be hosted virtually. Get ready for a life transforming encounter as we fix our gaze on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus is Lord. <laughs>